So welcome everyone to the latest webinar with Dr. Philip Miller. Today, we are here to talk about 2023, 2023 trends and new injectables and how to meet your beauty goals. So there's a lot of advancements with injectables and it's a rapidly growing area of the cosmetic industry. So Dr. Miller is going to give an exclusive introduction to Daxify, the newest neuromodulator on the market. Um, as well as all types of injectables. And in addition to learning all about um, dermal fillers and injectables today, there are some winners that will come out of today's webinar. So please stay tuned till the end. And everyone on the webinar is going to be eligible for a complimentary consultation, which is great because then you can get some one-on-one -on -one personal feedback um, and advice from Dr. Miller. And normally that is a $400 value. So otherwise, um, I am excited to introduce you to Dr. Philip Miller. If you don't know him already, he is an incredible board certified facial plastic surgeon. Ever since 2007, he has been voted every year among the best doctors in America and top doctors in New York. Um, he is double board certified, so has even extra special areas of expertise in the face and neck. He's written chapters for textbooks, he's served as editors for papers, he lectures to other physicians to teach them, and you may have also seen him on some media presence because he's appeared on everything from the Discovery Channel to the Today Show and in lots of magazines like Marie Claire and Hamptons and even New York Times. So without further ado, Dr. Miller, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Reese. again, thank you again for making this so easy and uh, welcome everyone tonight. And I'm very excited to talk to you this evening. I'm going to just pop up my presentation right now. Risa, please let me know if everything is uh, working, should be okay. So we're going to talk uh, tonight about- let's, let's switch to the presenter mode. Uh, it's in presenter mode now, is that right? Yes. And we're all set? It's in the moderator mode. It's in the moderator mode. Hold on just a second. Now you guys all get a sneak peek and you can see how oh, many slides yeah. we are going to show today. <laughs> but you know what's so funny? Because I hit, I thought I hit the darn. Uh, let me do this. And I got that. I got that. Let me just check one more time. That should be no the slideshow. Problem. Here we go. Is that right now? Perfect. Ah, all right. There we go. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm working on two different, uh, I've got this big screen behind me so that I can look right at the camera, but still see my slides. And then I have the computer down here and I'm working one with the other, but we're all set to go. So tonight we're going to talk about the 2023 trends and new injections, um, as well as how to uh, sort of meet your beauty goals. And one of the things that we're talking about when it comes to injections, we'll, we'll just do the basics here, right? And that would be uh, what we all know and love uh, for those of you who have used it a lot, which is Botox. Now, what exactly is Botox? Botox is a chemical that is injected uh, that numbs muscles. So right off the bat, we're talking about the facial muscles here. And it relaxes muscles. It makes it so that when you want to contract them, they don't really contract. And the three major areas that Botox is used for most of the time are the wrinkles that occur right around the eyes. As you are aware, those are called typically the crow's feet. And it relaxes the crow's feet. The other areas are those 11 lines, those sort of stubborn lines between the brows. And then yet a third area are those horizontal lines in the forehead. So with this medicine, Botox, botulinum toxin, and there are many other types, not just Botox. You've got Botox, you have um, Zeomin, you have Myoblock, you have a whole bunch, but they all more or less work the same, which is they simply temporarily restrict the innervation, they restrict the stimulation of the muscles to contraction. So the nerves continue to send the impulse, but but the muscles don't contract. And it's only temporary, don't worry, it only lasts for around four months, but that's where Daxify comes in. We'll talk about that in just a second. Getting back to the way it works, it relaxes the muscles. And so after you inject it into these locations, whether it's between the brows or in the forehead or maybe around the eyes, you get a relaxation of the muscles. And so you can see here that this individual before the treatment, when they frowned, had all of these 11 lines. In fact, she probably has 1 billion, 100 million, 111, 11111, right across, not just 11. But here she is after 30 days of getting a simple 20 units of Botox, and you can see that her lines look much better. Here is the crow's feet, those lines that are around the corner of the eyes, 
And here she is after 30 days getting Botox. Now, Botox doesn't work immediately. It takes anywhere from 12 hours to around 10 days for you to see the effect. It slowly, slowly uh, starts working. And you get the full effect around 10 days, maybe 14. And it lasts around four months. So you come back around every four months for you to get a retreatment. Now, it also works, as I mentioned, in the forehead areas, particularly those nasty horizontal lines up here in the forehead. I, I, my forehead lines are so darn bad right now that, um, that that when I get it, I have to be a little careful that I don't that I don't drop my brows because my bra my my forehead wrinkles are so unbelievably deep, and I'm I'm very grateful for Botox to help that out. But here you can see before and after getting those um, treatments. Now, um, you, it's best seen these type of treatments are best seen in animation, right? Because it's really a medicine that affects how you look when you start moving your face. So the 11 lines, as I mentioned before, before movement and the 11 lines afterwards, right? And then those crow's feet. And again, just around 24 units or so, it's not a lot of, uh, right here, you can see that there's those wrinkles in the corners of the eyes. And here, this gentleman is, is, is smiling right afterwards and no crow's feet. And what about those nasty forehead lines when you raise your brows in surprise or uh, are sort of um, bewildered? Uh, yeah, again, you can still sort of have some elevation of the brows, but you don't get those wrinkles. Now, Botox not only gets rid of wrinkles, but you can also get movement of the brows themselves. You can actually have a Botox brow lift. Now, how does that work? If we talked about the fact that muscles are numbed, if you will, that they sort of stop working, then how can Botox actually lift a brow? And I explain it with this simple explanation. And those blue lines right here, those blue lines are your eyebrows. Now you have a bunch of muscles called the forehead muscles. Those are actually pulling your eyebrows up. And then you have a bunch of brow muscles. Those are pulling the eyebrows down. So this is you actually sort of um, in, in, in resting tone. And if I want you, to, if I want to raise your brows, I actually relax the, the muscles down here and watch what happens. The brows go up. If I want to make the brows go down, I relax the muscles up here and look what happens. The brows go down. So that's how Botox works. Botox works a little bit differently than when you might expect. You actually want to relax the muscles that are either pulling it up or pulling it down in order to get the opposite effect. So Botox works really, really well in order to not only relax the muscle, relax the wrinkles that we get with animation, but also can reposition tissue as we see here with the brows. Now we've been talking a while now about a different type of, and these are called neuromodulators. The new one that's on the market that we're all excited to see in 2023 is Daxify. Why is that such a big deal? Why are you gonna be hearing about this? because it lasts longer. So this is a medicine that requires the same treatment, but it's gonna last closer to six to maybe even eight months, as opposed to only three to four months with the medicines that are on the market right now. Uh, I'm very excited. I'll be uh, trained on using this within the next four to five weeks or so. I've already got my date set up, so I'll be having it here in my New York office for you all to try. I'm very excited, as well as my New Orleans office down south. So uh, both whether it's north or south, you'll be able to have exposure and experience with Daxify. There's another one that's coming to market pretty soon. I don't have the name off the top of my head or a slide, but it's really sort of interesting. You ready for this? Whereas, as I mentioned, both Botox and Daxify and others take around maybe 10 days for the for you to see an effect, but lasts anywhere from for Botox four months and Daxify can last almost um, almost six to nine months. This new one that's coming out has a very, very quick onset and only lasts in around maybe two weeks. Why would that be beneficial, you might ask? Because Sometimes this really is the joke, you know, emergency Botox. Yeah, believe it or not, now we finally have that emergency Botox where I can give it to you and the effect can be seen within 24 hours. And for those of you who are still a little scared, a little nervous about getting treated, knowing that the treatment will last almost four months or in Daxify's case, almost eight. Well, this new medication that's coming out only lasts two weeks. So you can see what it, or you can feel what it actually is like getting it. And if you like it, you can advance to the medicines that last a little longer. 
So that's what's coming down the road in the neuromodulator. What about fillers? You know, what are fillers? Um, well, just like Botox relaxes muscles so that you don't get wrinkles, even when you're relaxed, sometimes you have depressions or you have loss of volume in your face or you need some of those wrinkles, which are relaxed from the neuromodulators, you need those plumped up a little bit. They need to be smoothed out. That's where fillers come in. And there are lots of fillers, and let me explain why there are. So we have all these different fillers, right? We've got, I don't know, Voluma, and uh, Ultra, and Velour, and Tioxane, RHA3, and which one is the right one for you? And the answer is, it depends where you wanna get injected. See, all of the injectables are made out of the same product, hyaluronic acid. And I like to sort of say, think of them as Legos. They're all the same Legos, except that they're put together in different ways. And different configurations of the Legos give different properties to each one of the products. So we choose the product that is the best for the location that you want injected, both in terms of how long it will last, as well as the effect that it will give you. That's how we choose which product for which location. Now, if you like these little explanations that I put into these presentations, please follow me at Dr. Philip J. Miller on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. I have a YouTube channel that I'll be sharing with you uh, afterwards called uh, youtube.com slash DR Philip J. Miller. Um, and that's where you can find all of these little clips. And again, thank you, April, so much for helping not only produce these clips, but also putting them into this presentation this evening. So we have all these different types of fillers, and we can put them together in order to create, I don't know, how about a supermodel makeover? Let's take a look what I did here for just a quick lunchtime break treatment. We're going to be doing a little enhancement of the cheeks, a little enhancement of the chin, and maybe a little enhancement of the jaw as well. Is that what you were interested in? Today? Yes, it sounds Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Um, now, we were talking about brand new treatments that were coming out for 2023. And one of them that's really, I'm excited, is Allergan, which produces Juvederm, Juvederm Ultra Plus, uh, Velour, Volbella, Voluma. They come out with a new one. They're stuck on the Vs. I don't know what it is. But they came out with a new one called Velux. And Velux is great for jawline enhancement. Uh, I've been sent a, a several um, um, uh, vials for me to sort of get my hands uh, experienced with it. And I love it. I think it's terrific. I really do. And it's great for a treatment that I have called a GI jaw or a GI Jane, if you will. Remember those really strong jaw lines. Take a look at this individual that I did a GI jaw. A GI jaw here in order to give jaw enhancement in a gentleman. If you want to take a look over here, this is the side I have not yet treated. The jaw is actually a little retrusive. You don't see a very good definition at all regarding the chin is a little bit more curved. But now we're going to go ahead. This is the side I treated. And you can see the jaw is much sharper right here. You can see the angle of the mandible nicely. The indentation over here. And we're building out the more square jaw. This is called a GI jaw. You can do it with filler or you can do it with implants. Right now we're just doing it with Okay, so that's sort of the latest and greatest when it comes to fillers and injectables and Botox. But what are the other trends that are going on right now in 2023? Well, one thing I want to sort of talk about real quickly is this kind of new discussion on social media about buckle fat removal. Uh, and we've seen a lot. You may have seen this photograph and people are saying, don't get buckle fat removed. You know, you'll get all this hollowing in here or in here and over here. And let me just stop for a moment and back up a little bit. What is buckle fat? Buckle fat is a separate, unique piece of, uh, of fat that sits more or less in the cheek region over here, extends in other parts, but it more or less is responsible for that bulge that you might see down here. Now, for a really long time, we were told by our predecessors, oh, don't take out buckle fat because if you do, you'll get a real hollowing in here. And it was funny because when I was told that, I said, where's the proof? Where's the evidence? And I was never given it. 
Um, and, and it was sort of became almost like an old wives tale. And I think it was because people were scared about removing it because if they did at the time, back when I trained, there was no treatment for it. There wasn't anything like fillers that you see now. There wasn't fat injections, which I'm going to share with you a little bit later on in this webinar. There was no treatment for it. So, uh-oh, let's not make a problem. That being said, what's crazy is that buckle fat is now part and parcel of almost our everyday facelifts. We're doing it on 50 and 60 year olds individuals because after we do the facelift, we're finding that they're still full right down here. And during the operation, you can see that there's too much fat and it's the buckle fat that's actually causing it. So why the controversy, right? Why not do it? Well, because people are seeing images like this. But guess what? This is not buckle fat excision. What operation is this? It's not. It's makeup. That's all this is. This is makeup, and this is makeup, and this is makeup. And how can I prove it? Well, fortunately, I'm a little bit of a photographer. I love photography, right? So one of the things you know about photography is lighting. Lighting is really important. So let's take a look at this in this beautiful photograph, right? You see that she has a shadow here, right? So the light is coming in from this right side. This neck is much lighter. This neck is much darker. And if that would be the case, then this hollowing should be lighter and this hollowing should be darker. But it's not. And the reason it's not is because this has been colored in with simple makeup. So when you see that overly sculpted kind of sunken mid face, more often than not, that's not an example of buckle fat. That's actually an example of someone who wants to accentuate their cheekbones by using a lot of makeup to provide it. It's not an example for why you shouldn't get buckle fat excision. Buckle fat candidates using it in the right individual really can slim the face. It can give a natural contour. And even if I were to remove all the buckle fat as I typically do, I've never had a patient say, you've made me look too skinny. You've made me look too gaunt. You've made me look too skeletonized. It's never happened. If anything, I have to actually tell patients, listen, it's not going to be such a huge difference. It's going to be a subtle difference, but one that you're definitely going to appreciate and one that's worth it. So by all means, don't be concerned that it'll be too much. Another thing patients always sort of say is, look, you know, I just want a little bit elevation over here, over here, but you know, that's all I want. And when they do that, they, they don't realize they're blocking, their hand is blocking all the extra skin that's behind their ear when they do this, you know, they think they can just get some non-invasive treatment. So the next video might be a little bit um, uh, too graphic for some of you. I'm not showing any surgery, I promise, but, but I, I do move some skin. And so if you want to just look away for a second, I'll tell you when you can look back. But here's this individual where I explain to you why facelift incisions and facelift surgery is so important. Hey everybody, Dr. Miller. And why fat injections are coming stand in. in front of the mirror all the time and sort of pull back and say, oh, this is all I want. I just want my neck to look just like this. And what you're not able to see is all this extra skin that develops on the side. You're not paying attention to that. You're paying attention to how good your neck looks and how your jawline looks like this patient does now after her facelift and neck lift. But what you're not seeing is all this extra skin. And what do I do with that extra skin? How do I get rid of it? Well, that's why we put the incisions where we do, because now I'm gonna be able to take all that extra skin and raise it up and lift. Look at all that extra skin she has now. Okay, okay for those of and you who looked around, you can turn around. Off. It's okay, I'm and just showing you what, get this beautiful contour, uh, what beautiful the advantage neck, of a facelift is. A, a jawline and all that extra skin, bye-bye. You hear about fillers, right? Off the shelf fillers in order to fill facial volumes. Well, what if you don't wanna use something artificial? You can use something very natural and that's fat injections. Believe it or not, this is a little bit of fat that we harvested from a patient. We transfer that to this small little syringe and we use a cannula, this small little very blunt device in order to introduce it into different areas of the face that are clearly deficient in volume. So that is fat injections. You know, it used to be that we used to think facelifting was all about just sort of repositioning everything. And we realize now it's about volume enhancement. It's about volume replacement. And so combining facelift techniques with volume enhancement with 
fat injections, harvesting your own fat from like your belly or your thighs or your midsection, and then repositioning it up here in your cheeks where you become def uh, deflated and depleted is really making a dramatic effects. And we can see that in a number of cases here in an individual who's undergone the procedure uh, on the left, and then uh, you see immediately to that right, their uh, post-op results. The neck is in improved. You can see the, uh, the cheek region as well has been enhanced and the jawline itself is much more streamlined and smooth without the jowling that is typically seen in, in, in an aged face. So combining these techniques are, are really, really working quite well. The second, the, the next trend that seems to be really uh, uh, popular nowadays is rejuvenating the upper eyelids. That's called blepharoplasty, where you sort of take out the bags in the eyelids as well as remove a little bit of skin. Let me explain. Facial plastic surgery today, doing some upper eyelids. So what does that mean, upper eyelid surgery? Well, we'll take a look. I'm showing you some tissue here, just a little forewarning. You know, we all say eye bags, right? So these are the fat pockets that I go ahead and take out. That's one eye. Here's the other eye over here. And these are all the fat that needs to come out, a little strip of muscle, as well as the extra skin. So that's what an upper lid blepharoplasty is. It really creates a nice rejuvenated appearance. It makes you so much re more rested. Um, and we can even elevate the lid margin as well. Now, one of the techniques that I was really excited about and, and is definitely trending in my practice is the concept of a micro lift. And I already gave a webinar about this. I'll give you a link to that um, uh, in just a couple of slides. But the micro lift is the notion if you just take your fingers and you put them on either side of your cheek right here and you just sort of lift it up, right? And if and I like using one finger because if you use one finger, you can sort of see if you've got a lot of extra skin on either side because if you do, then you need something more. But a micro lift is really just almost lifting your lifting your face like this. It's a small little incision in the hairline done under local anesthesia. As I mentioned, I did a webinar on this before. Okay. Uh, it can be done and under, done totally under local lift. anesthesia. Right. This individual is totally the awake. You can How see the feel? hairline incision fantastic. up yeah. over here. Um, and wow. here they are post-operatively. Uh, very, very simple, straightforward procedure. Again, um, I'm going to share with you the webinar that I did. And in conjunction with that, I do another non-invasive procedure called My Elevate that I also talked about at that same uh, presentation uh, that I'll share with you, uh, where you can improve the jawline and the neck using a relatively non-invasive technique where I'm just um, using punctures. Uh, all I'm doing is placing a couple of punctures within the skin itself after liposuctioning or removing the fat and then tightening the skin using radio frequency and then elevating the soft tissue with this device, which I can take underneath the skin and it sort of loops around the tissues underneath your skin and it sort of pulls. So it, it works incredibly well. I, I won't waste any more time for those of you who uh, watched it before. Please take a look at my Elevate and MicroLift webinar. Uh, it's at the youtube.com. If, if, you, if you're looking at this on your computer, by all means, go ahead and snap a QR code. If you want to, you can take a snapshot of this slide. Uh, if you're looking at this presentation on your phone, and um, you can go to my channel, youtube.com slash DR Philip J. Miller, and I have uh, the webinar on those two procedures, the My Elevate and the webinar. Um, two last things before we answer, answer some questions and get you on your way for this evening. Uh, another really big topic, a big trend that's emerging is male plastic surgery. It is absolutely becoming it's just amazing how this is booming right now. Men are feeling so much more comfortable coming in and not only requesting the non-invasive techniques such as Botox or we call them Brotox. I didn't invent that. I, I think it's funny, but come on, Brotox, it's sort of fun. All right, it, whatever it takes to get the guys in, right? So, so men really like the Botox. They like the fillers, particularly the GI jaw. And they're having surgery now, a lot of male plastic surgery. I would love to show you uh, tons of male uh, facelifts, but it's so funny. Uh, almost every man who comes in for a facelift looks at me and says, look, doc, I want to see all your, your post-ops. And I have plenty. And, and I say, I'd be delighted to. Can I use your before and after photos for to show my other clients? And all the men go, oh, no, 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 you can't use mine. You can't use mine. And I laugh and I'm like, yeah, and that's why I don't have hundreds and thousands to show you because all the other hundreds and thousands said no, just like you, but I have enough to reassure you. So male plastic surgery, uh, despite want, uh, fewer wanting to share it, are definitely coming in. But 
you know, what, when it all is said and done, we've looked at the latest in fillers. We've looked at the latest in Botox. We've looked at some of the latest trends. And these trends aren't just in my office. They're, these absolutely are trends that are, that are without the, within the country um, and, uh, and also trending on the internet. So I wanted to bring it up. The truth is don't go for trends, right? I, I think one of the things I love most of all is individualizing a plan that creates a unique appearance for you. Um, this is an individual. This actually is a patient of mine. Um, who I've spent a lot of time talking exactly what it is that she wanted. And we've looked at photographs. Uh, we've looked at her face from several different angles. Uh, we communicated. She's coming in for uh, a, a, another procedure. And, and uh, right before the procedure, which is in, I think, a week or so, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm hearing something that might be a little different. Come in again. Let's talk some more and let's create this unified vision for you because I think what you're describing now might be a little different from what it is that you had originally conceived. So look, it's all about making sure that you're happy. It's all about making sure that we achieve your goals. And so it's so important for you to convey what it is you want to achieve with your surgeon, with me or whoever you choose to go to and make sure they hear you and make sure that it's consistent. And it's the doctor's responsibility to hear that consistency in you so that we can achieve the results that you want. So uh, thank you so much for spending just 25 minutes with me or maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes with me. Uh, please feel free to contact me through social media. Uh, you can go onto my website at drphilipmiller.com. Those of you down South, down in NOLA, by all means, go to my new brand new website, drphilipmillernola.com uh, and, and uh, text us at 212-750-7100. Follow us on social media. I love doing these videos. I love explaining things. Uh, um, there are those who say, please, so you don't have to explain it again. I get it. I know, but I really do love it. And so with that, I'd love to stop this presentation right now and get back to answering some questions. And uh, again, Risa, thanks so very much for, for moderating this, this evening. Great. Thank you so much. That was so helpful and so interesting. And what you showed us about the makeup on the cheeks. Wow. Very, oh, very that cool. is, I can't tell you how frustrating it is. I, I think it's just such a disservice the, the the media, you know, just wants to jump on things and yeah. they look at that and, and it's, but it's, it's just utterly false and it's so misleading and, 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 and it's really harmful to patients. Yeah, absolutely. So with that in mind, this is the time to pop in any of your questions in the Q&A that you might have. This is a great opportunity to ask Dr. Miller anything you might have. So who's going to be the first? Um, in the meantime, as soon as we're done with these questions, um, we will um, announce kind of how we're going to do the drawing for the free injectable syringe. So let's see. Um, all right. I'll start with my own question while everyone else is getting their questions ready here. So what do you think about Botox and injectables for the lines in the neck? Yeah, you know, we, you can use Botox in so many areas. Um, we didn't even get to the notion of using Botox in the masseter muscle for either slimming the face or because patients have like bad TMJ. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for that. And working down the face, as you mentioned, for the horizontal lines that you have here or for the vertical lines, you can also uh, treat that as well. Um, it, it works pretty good, but I, uh, it doesn't necessarily, it's not a replacement for a lot of other uh, treatments, but I think, it, I think it works just great. Great, yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize how many amazing uses of Botox there are. Um, all right, questions are coming in. Here we go, Dr. Miller. So do fillers need to be dissolved after a couple of years before getting more? Um, no. Now, that's a very good question. Now, all of the fillers that I mentioned this evening are um, not permanent. And the other thing I love about them um, are that they can be dissolved. And I think that's really important. There are a lot of fillers on the market. Oh, that this is great. Oh, I can. I'm really excited about the fact that that that's a great question. I'm going to bring this up in just a moment. But all the fillers that I do not only are um, not permanent, and they typically will last anywhere from nine months to maybe a year and a half, uh, but they can also be dissolved. And often when you need more filler in a year or two, if there's 
material that's still there, then you just don't need as much filler. Um, but no, you only typically want to dissolve it if it's in the, if it maybe seldomly it can migrate in the wrong place, if the person put too much in, et cetera. Now, what you want to avoid is too much filler. And I'm really excited to share this with you because this became a topic. Oh, wait a second. Can you see there that? You this is the picture of Madonna. Did, did you see that one? I don't know if you I saw I actually that. saw that this morning on the news. I'll try and find a link and pop it in here. Yeah, you know, okay. Now, this is really, really important, okay? Number one, fillers didn't do this to Madonna. Doctors did, okay? That's like blaming a uh, beautiful oil paint for a horrible masterpiece. You don't blame the painter. You don't blame the paint. You blame the painter. Um, so this is... And, and you also want to blame the patient for this, partly. And, and, and no offense to Madonna, because it may not have been her, but it's partly the patient because sometimes the patients come back and they go, I want more, I want more, and I want more. And the doctor should say no. And I'll tell you right now, I say no all the time. And I know a lot of my colleagues say no. And the patients, however, particularly stars, don't like hearing the word no. And they keep going around until they hear yes. But hearing yes from a not so great doctor isn't the same thing as hearing no from a good doctor and a great doctor. And so it's partly the patient's fault for not stopping and listening to their advisor telling them you've had too much. But flipping it totally around, it could not be her fault at all. Now, um, I've seen faces like Madonna's before, and it's been pa patients who, and I'm, this is why I thought of it, because the question was about um, dissolvable fillers. There are fillers in the face that are permanent. The most common one is silicone. And silicone, particularly in the lips, looks amazing, looks terrific for years. And then mm -hmm. something happens, not in everybody, and not all the time, but something happens where all of a sudden they get this real puffy appearance. Those lips, which look enormous, right? If you think about it, they often appear in older individuals. Why? Because it took that long for that result to occur. When they were younger, the lips looked great. You see that kind of puffy face in older individuals. Why? Because they got silicon when they were 30 and 40, and they looked pretty good then, and it went haywire when they were 60 or 70. So please, try to stay away from the permanent fillers, in my impression, and you want the ones that dissolve. Very helpful. And yeah, I posted a link to the Madonna picture so you guys can see it up close. All right. There's some great questions in here. So what do you think is better, fillers or fat transfer? Okay. Um, one of the, they have to do, it's somewhat personal preference, right? So they're not entirely equivalent. Okay. Fillers, the one I talked about out of a box, right? They come right out of the closet. You, you, there's no preparation for it. There's really almost no recovery for it. You walk in the door. Uh, I pull it off the shelf. I inject it wherever you want. You walk out the door, maybe a little bit of swelling, maybe a little bruising for a couple of days, but you're back to where you are. Fat injections, totally different. Okay. That's more of a procedure. It requires harvesting from one part of your body and then processing it. And unlike the filler, which just can be injected sort of almost in one spot, the fat will only work if it's layered. Think of it almost layering it between individual layers of cells. So that's why you saw in that video, I was going back and forth so often because I'm trying to put layers of fat in and all of that layering causes trauma. And so when fat injections, patients often are a little bit, are, are, are more swollen for a lot longer. Now, advantage, it's your own tissue and it lasts a lot longer. And the typically the amount of Botox, the amount of fat is endless, right? I can keep harvesting fat if you need more, whereas filler doesn't last forever. And every time you need a little bit more, I have to charge you for another syringe. In fat, it's one, it's a one-time fee and it lasts a lot longer. So it's not exactly apples and oranges. I hope that helped. Got it. And I think, you know, that's why he's, uh, Dr. Miller is offering the complimentary consultations. So whoever asked that question, you know, if you come in, Dr. Miller could for sure talk to you about your specific needs. All right. So um, I am sure each person is different, but can you provide um, an estimate to the last patient you discussed um, as to the unique look procedure and what that might cost? I guess that's all. Oh, the, the, the unique look isn't a procedure. The unique look is my perspective. 
and it costs you, if you're on here, nothing. The, the unique look is the process of you and I going through and finding out what is best for you and figuring out it's, it's my consultation process. Um, what she's actually getting can be, I, I, and I, and I don't, I don't recall off the top of my head, but it's a version of a, of a, of a, of a micro lift and a modified neck lift that we're customizing for her based on some, some uh, um, limitations that she's imposing on me, which I don't mind at all. I, I don't mind working with patients as long as I feel I can get the right results. Patients who put limitations on me and in the process, I know I can't get the results they want. I'll, I'll just turn that opportunity away. Got it. And if anyone here has had a consultation with Dr. Miller, they can tell you it is a unique experience because unlike a lot of doctors out there, his whole philosophy, this natural look is to really listen to you and make sure that you guys align together on the treatment plan, which is so amazing. All right. Um, do you perform eye, um, eye lifts um, using to the fat under the eye? I'm 43 and I have noticeably puffy eyes as well as sunken area on the outer corners of the orbital where the cheek and the eye meet. Yeah. So you're, you're describing once again, the, um, the really fascinating part about aging. I know it doesn't seem very fascinating to you, but, but, you know, there's so many things going on as we age, you're seeing both descent of tissue, you're seeing both loss of volume, hence the depression that you're describing here. You're also seeing laxity of the boundaries that typically kept the fat where it was and hence the bag that's falling forward underneath. And it's a little bit like the gentleman who, or the woman who has a little bit of a larger belly, but a very narrow waist and, and she has uh, or he has uh, tight pants and you see that belly falling forward. That's exactly what's happening here. The, the sort of fat of the lower eyelid is falling forward over the depression that has been created with volume loss beneath it. So the treatment is both um, adding volume to the depression below and removing volume for the bulge above. Is there a technique you might naturally conclude, hey, well, why don't you just take the bulge and reposition it below to the depression? And there is a technique that does it. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, uh, I, I don't think it's right for everyone simply because the volumes often don't match up. So the amount that you want to transfer isn't the same amount that you can transfer. And so you end up being short anyway, and you have to use another technique. But if it works, it's a great technique. Absolutely great. But again, I'd be delighted to see you and come on in and we can talk. Great. And maybe a whole nother webinar in the future about eyes yeah. and all the amazing procedures. All right. Um, so what do you think about biostimulators like PLLA um, or even PRF or PRP? Do you recommend any? Hey, um, yeah, um, I guess by that, okay, well, PLLA, I, 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 I'll just, my, my personal bias is I'm not a big fan of PLLA. And the simple reason is nothing against PLLA and nothing against, I like stuff that dissolves. Um, even in the best of hands, I've seen unfortunate accidents occur. And, and when you have products like PLLA that do not um, respond to any reversing agent, whatever you have, you have. And it's hard to, it's hard to change that. Um, that's different than PRP. Uh, uh, PLLA is a product that uh, sort of stimulates collagen once injected. PRP is your own tissue. That's a, a, a platelet-rich plasma. And I am a big fan of PRP, but I think you also have to um, put it into perspective. It, it, it provides assistance for the maneuvers that it is actually for, for, for depending upon what it is that you are, are using it for. It is not a panacea. It is not an end all be all. It is not stem cells. Uh, be careful what you're getting it for. Uh, more often than not, if it's being added to something else, you're paying for something that's really not doing anything because all they're doing is taking this thing, which is works and they're adding PRP and the PRP probably isn't doing anything. They'll tell you it decreases bruising and decreases swelling, but the right technique for this typically does that as well. 
Interesting. Okay, a few more questions here. We're almost ready to wrap up. So if anyone else has a question, this is the time. So I just noticed these odd triangle dips on either side of my nose when I smile. What is that and is it possible to get rid of? Um, Those little triangle dips on either side of your nose when you smile. What? Hold on just a second here. I accidentally, there we go. Uh, I'm, I'm reading, I just noticed the odd triangle dips on either side of my nose when I smile. What is it? Oh, I think what you're referring to, she, I think she's referring to these areas right here, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, she said no under the eyes. I, odd triangles? Like, oh, oh, like over here? Am I right? K.A., is this area over here? I don't yes. want to say your name. Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, I don't want to say people's names. And I, I don't know if anyone else can see them, but I want to be, I want to be uh, respectful. Um, so yeah, so uh, that's really interesting. That's, that's an example of volume loss. So th that's right in the region of the orbital malar ligament. And as we get older, that volume of the malar fat pad starts falling, and then you start smiling, and it used to fill up with with fat, and now you don't have the fat anymore to fill it. And so you start seeing that depression right there. It responds very well to injections. I love using Volbella in that region. You can also use Restylane. Um, you can use Restylane Kiss. You can use a number of products. Uh, and, and it works very, very well. I'm, I'm, I'm quite conservative in that area. I find that you inject it not almost to completion, and then you wait around four or five, uh, 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 five, four or five days, maybe a little bit longer. Um, and, and then it usually looks terrific. Yeah, yeah. Got it. All right. She says she'll see you soon. Oh, good, good, good. And please remind me that we talked. Please do. Yes. All right. A few more questions. So what are your thoughts on the RHA fillers? Um, I've reacted to Juvederm and Restylane, but need filler. Is this another option for me? Yes. Uh, love RHA. Um, there's um, That's by a company called Revance, RHA 2, 3, and 4. Love them. Use them. I love RHA 3 down here. It's really wrong. I don't know why I necessarily chose just the products that I did uh, and mentioned them, but I think I had RHA in my video. So, so uh, please know I I really use the product that I think is best for the area that we're treating, and I will change products as as you mentioned because um, because you might have been either allergic or not had a good response, or because it didn't last as long. So, absolutely, uh, I'm a big fan of the RHA products. I think they work great. Got it. And you often blend different products, right? It won't be one That's right. brand There's, everywhere. Yeah. And as I mentioned in the video, they're all versions of hyaluronic acid. So they're all dissolvable. The last long, the last for different durations. You're very welcome, J, JR. You're welcome. Um, they last for different um, um they okay. last for different durations. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. So um, last question here. This is more of a comment, but um, AO said you're very good. She was afraid of all Botox filler and buckle fat removal. And after this, feeling very confident. Thank you. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And that's what it's all about. You know, I, I it's about education. It really is. And please know, I, I have so many patients who started out like I want five units of Botox. Now, normally it's anywhere from 25 to 75, right? I want five units. That's it. All I want is five. And I'm like, no problem. Okay. I get it. Everyone wants to go at their own pace and I'm not going to push you. Okay. We go as slow or, or, or as fast as if it's fast, it's as fast as I think is appropriate, but we go as slow as you want. And, and it's about proceeding not only to your comfort level, uh, but also to what changes you're willing to to want to undergo. And everyone has a different speed. Everyone has a different tolerance. Everyone has a different desire. And that's all, um, it, there's no cookie cutter format here in this practice. Got it. Okay, and to end with, can we talk about, I, I think that, that the comment that you just brought up, um, the, the viewer brought up is, you know, um, it's scary to get injectables. And a lot of people, they see these things in the media, like what Madonna looks like. I mean, how, if they're nervous to come in and they're worried and they want to look natural, is that something you hear often? And is that something that would concern you? I, I, I'm really sorry. I have to say that um, I'm looking straight at you, you know, but I do have the questions here <laughs> off to the side and AK and BG, BG 
who are dear, dear patients of mine who are kind enough to be on th th this webinar, just wrote some very, very beautiful things. Thank you very much. Uh, you know how fond I am of you, the two of you as well. Um, so thank you. And I'm sorry, Risa, what was, That's your, okay. what was your so, question? Last question. So, you know, it is it, the comment that someone made. It's true. A lot of people are scared about looking fake or looking overdone, especially when we see these pictures of Madonna, who we would like to think can go to doctors that are good and she can afford it. So is that a concern you hear a lot in your practice? And what would you say back to someone that's worried about that? Uh, I would say number one is you always see bad work. Um, you often don't see good work. And, and second of all, it's on one hand, you sort of say to yourself, Hey, look what, look how it happened to this person. They are blank and they are someone who has all the resources and look, it even happened to them. They could have chosen the best doctor. Again, often those individuals don't like hearing the word. No, they don't want to hear you don't need it, or you're not a candidate. And I'll, and I'll leave you with this. I saw a phenomenal show on Broadway. For those of you, I don't know if it's still on. It was MJ. It was the Michael Jackson show on Broadway about um, his, his experience leading up to, I believe, his final tour, whichever tour it was. I apologize for not remember, uh, remembering it. It was a great show. And, but part of it was that it showed his dedication to his craft. It showed his commitment to being the best. It showed his um, uh, uh, perseverance in achieving what it is that he wanted to achieve that he could dream. And in particular, it was that he wanted to start this show with being below the stage. And as the music build, et cetera, he wanted to get shot out of a cannon below the stage to pop up and then have the hole that he got shot out of close so that he would land on his feet. Okay. And throughout the play, Peppered is his desire to have this done and his, his absolute insistence that it be achieved and that it was possible despite all the hurdles that were being presented, both financial physical, mechanical, electrical, you name it. He said, no, I want it. For those of you who may have been old enough to see the show, whether on YouTube or live, he, he got it done. They did it. It's amazing that this guy actually was that insistent and got it. But guess what? That same determination and reluctance to hear the negatives is what gave him the nose that he ultimately was known for. Because he did go to those of us who were real good and said, Michael, no, you can't have any more, okay? Those injections are gonna destroy your nose. And instead, he went and he ultimately found someone, right? Because he's used to getting his way. And he found someone who said, sure, I'll do that for you, and destroyed his nose. So when you see these famous people looking so bad, that's why I'm saying, look, Partly, it's not the surgery's fault. It's not even the real good surgeon's fault. A lot of times, sadly, and I hate to blame the victim, I hate to blame the patient, but sometimes it's because the patients don't hear no and they don't want to hear no. So I'll, I'll leave you with that. You know, don't, don't blame, often don't blame the fillers and the Botox. Um, go ahead um, and don't blame the, don't blame the, 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 the Botox and the fillers. Often it's the artist that's that's to be blamed, not just the patient, the actual surgeon or, or the dermatologist or whoever. Got it. And one last thing uh, to mention is Renuva is also a, a really great filler that I didn't mention about. Uh, it's it's great. Uh, there again, there's whatever's out there. I, I really incorporate, and it's it's the best. Got it. Well, I really like the comment that you said that we don't see the good work. We only see the bad work. And I think that's really important. And I will tell you, if you ever spend any time in Dr. Miller's practice and the people you see walking in and out, um, that those are all examples of good work. <laughs> because you cannot well, tell. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Miller, so much. This has been great. It's so helpful just to hear it straight from you and cut out all the noise in the media. Um, thank you so much for who, everyone who joined us tonight. We appreciate you following us on social media, social media and being a part of our practice.
Um, everyone who was on this webinar tonight is eligible for a complimentary consultation. So I have your names and emails from when you registered. So you are all um, ready to go to call or you can schedule online right now after hours. And then we also are going to pick three lucky attendees to be awarded a free syringe. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, so good. which is amazing. And we thank uh, the vendors very much for helping provide us of that. So um, we will do a, um, a, a little raffle. Drum roll? Yes. Can we do a drum roll? Okay, no drum Can roll. Can we do a drum roll, please? All right, do, 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 do. here okay. we go. The first one is Shirley. Oh, remember, you just say, remember, I just, yeah, I'm, so, I'm so cautious about. SD names. is okay. one. I'll just write these down for myself. Um, and the next one, drum roll, please. Yes, yes. Is Jennifer R. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Jennifer R. And the last one here is uh, CZ. So those All are right. your initials. We will be reaching out to you. And I only said the name of the people that were more than one of those in here, hopefully, or there were. So thank you so much. The three of you get a complimentary um, syringe of filler, which can go a long way in the hands of someone like Dr. Miller. So I'm really excited for you. I'm um, really happy for everyone who came in today to get to meet Dr. Miller and have him give them a really, you know, one-on-one -on -one personal consultation. And please stay tuned because we will keep these going. And if you guys have questions or suggestions for the next webinar, let us know. And otherwise, thank you, Dr. Miller, for taking time out of your day. I know you did surgery all day and you must be exhausted, but we really appreciate yeah. this. My pleasure. I really love this. I love teaching. I love I love being able to reach out. And uh, yeah, I just want to reiterate, please follow us on this. Uh, um, please follow us on social media, but more importantly, like leave your questions. And we really do try to get to the questions. Um, and for those of you who were unable to um, uh, see tonight's uh, webinar. If you're watching it on YouTube, by all means, feel free to leave questions uh, on the uh, comment section. And one of us will try to get uh, to answer that as, as best we can. So Reese, again, thank you so much for taking so much. time out of your evening to host this. I really, really appreciate it. And everyone, we'll see you here uh, in New York or down south in Nala real quick. Yes. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.